MSUTV is on the air, bringing you the best student-produced educational, entertaining, and informative programming. Broadcasting out of Breckenridge Hall on the campus of Moorhead State University, MSUTV is signing on. Tonight on News Center, MSU Concert Choir gives their last concert. We learn a new language at the Round County Public Library, and we make some new fishy friends with Campus Activities Board. A news center met with the men's basketball team graduate assistant. All this and more tonight on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Sahara LaForce. And I'm Josh Bryant. Here's what's making headlines for April 25th, 2019. The Rowan County Public Library hosted their second American Sign Language class this past Saturday. New Center's Olivia Leap was there. A. Everybody's got that one. American a. Sign Language is a language that many don't know. The Rowan County Public Library has offered classes every Saturday to teach the public ASL. Teacher of this class, Morgan Mullins, expresses why the American Sign Language class has started up. This is Deaf History Month. Uh, we wanted to do something that tied into that, and it's a service that I feel like we've been off and on in need of, and it's something that um, the library should provide, is the ability to interpret for people who come in and want to use the services that we offer, and they're either hard of hearing or they're deaf, and they need someone who can sign because they have difficulty communicating verbally if they can't read lips or if they're nonverbal deaf. And so that's something that we just don't have and we haven't had for a long time. And I was quite surprised to find that out. And so um, I feel as though there are, given the response to the class we've had, which has been very positive, there are more more hearing impaired and deaf folks in our community than we realize, which is almost always the case with any kind of minority. And um, that means, that indicates to me that probably they have learned to work around the fact that we don't have an interpreter as opposed to it should be our job to provide that. So we're trying to raise awareness in the community specifically. We're trying to get other folks interested. We're trying to educate um, our patrons and Moorhead and Rowan County to know that there are deaf and hard of hearing folks out there who do come into the library and use our services, who do come into programs. They go to the movies. They, you know, they live their lives just like anyone else. And with that interest, I'm hoping that that means we'll be able to uh, find room and time in our budget um, and amongst the staff and things like that to increase the amount of services that we offer to make that more available to people. Mullen said that he was surprised that the outcome for this class was so big. We want to make the library a welcoming place for everybody, regardless of your, the demographic. The future for the American Sign Language class is already underway. Given the success of this program, uh, we're probably going to try again maybe later this year, uh, if, if we can, to offer a, um, a revised, more structured version of this same class over again, another month-long course. And if it stays successful, then it's probably going to become something that we'll do at least once or twice a year. Uh, I would like to work it into summer reading when a lot of um, children are out of school because that's one of our biggest, most popular programs. It's a national program. Um, our attendance skyrockets. And if we can get Get kids involved and interested, then you know our tweens, our teens. Um, you know we could start doing signing at Mother Goose story time, that kind of thing. Uh, we really want to spread that to the younger demographics and get them interested as well because kids pick things up so quick. And so hopefully, you know, maybe in a few years we'll have all of Moorhead signing out on the streets to each other. For New Center, I'm Olivia Leet. A scam circulating through Rowan County is targeting renters. Pictures of rental properties have been posted online with a fake number to call. The ads are getting people to send money to the scammer for a down deposit on the rental. The sheriff's office has received many complaints about this and urges the public to be aware of the situation. Rowan County Sheriff Matt Sparks says to not mail any deposits for rental property without first verifying the person you are mailing your deposit to owns the property. A church in Sri Lanka was bombed Sunday by terrorists leaving over 350 people dead and roughly 500 injured. The attacks were supposedly reported to cabinet spokesmen 14 days before the attack. 
The reports were never shared with the minister or any of the other targets. Lawmakers are calling for the arrest and prosecu prosecution of two officials. It is believed that there are nine attackers, some of, some of which have been identified as Sri Lanka residents from a small Muslim community. The suspects are still at large. Now let's check in with Isaac Kroon for a preview of this week's weather. So Isaac? Well, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty comfortable out there so far as far as temperature goes. Um, but it's stayed pretty dry, but that's unfortunately going to change tonight. We will get some rain, uh, and that continues throughout the forecast really through the next week. So we're looking at a bunch of rain coming in. So Seems mm. like that's the same thing every week. It's a typical Isaac. Kentucky <laughs> weather trend, I guess. I'm absolutely so sick of the rain. Oh, aren't we all? I know it. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, Isaac. When we get back, we have an interview with one of the student directors for the 10-minute play showcases, Alyssa Francis. Alyssa Francis. So Alyssa, could you tell me a little bit about these 10-minute play showcases? Uh, yeah, it's for a class, Theater 380. It is 15 students directing 10-minute plays each from dif different comedies, different dramas, anything, just all different uh, plays. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how has the process been going for you so far? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's over the course of the entire semester. We casted our actors at the beginning of March, and so those are just other students from the university, so I've been working closely with my peers, directing my scene, and it's coming together really well. And, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You're good. Uh, so how did you get this opportunity? What, uh, through what do you do this? Um, it is a required course for theater majors. Uh, it's an upper-level course that you're required to have two prerequisites to and it's only offered in the spring and it's every year mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um what do you do you believe that you've gained anything anything experience wise from oh this? yeah absolutely um we work very individually what where it is a class our professor is just giving us basically notes but it's completely our directing skills and put to put to work so mm. it's an app for my first opportunity to actually put something of my own on here at MSU and it's a lot of fun and I've gained a lot working with my actors plus Greg Carlisle the professor 
That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love working with Greg Carlisle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so where and when will people be able to watch yours and other showcases? It will be Tuesday, April 30th at 8 p.m. at the Lucille Cottle Little Theater. Well, I'm super excited to see your scene. Uh, what is what is the play it's from again? Uh, I am directing the first scene from a play called Mary Page Marlowe by Tracy Letts. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the plot. Um, it is about... The overall plot is about a character named Mary Page Marlowe, and it follows her life. This beginning scene is her telling her two children that she's, her, their father is getting a divorce and that they are going to have to move to Kentucky from Ohio. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the kids don't take it too well, but it's a lot of fun, and it's really funny. And mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. Well, I am super excited to see it. Good luck, or break a leg. <laughs> to you and all of your actors. <laughs> thank I'm you. I'm so ready to go to that showcase. <laughs> <laughs> thank well, thank you, Alyssa. We'll be right back with your weather update. Welcome to Moorhead Tonight. Get in here. Welcome to, as you saw at the beginning of the show, I'm off of medication, so this will be a good episode. <laughs> Uh, a lot of response. Number one show, number one late night show in all of Rowan County. That is tremendous. Uh, the audience has spoken. Both of them enjoyed the show. Oh, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Quiet now. You can't, you can't Jimmy Fallon on us. Uh, <laughs> Grant Johnson. Oh, boy, he's talented. We don't care where you are from. We support you. We need you. We love you. In Morehead State University, we major in diversity. We need you. We love you. Good evening, Moorhead. I'm Isaac Kroon. Let's get into checking into what your weather is looking at, looking like right now. Current conditions are sitting at 76 degrees. It is cloudy outside. You may feel a few droplets of water out there. Humidity is sitting at 52% with winds at 6 miles per hour. So all in all, not a really bad evening. Uh, get out there. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. Uh, just be aware of the rain that is coming in tonight. So as we go into our Temperature map right now currently across the state, just really beautiful conditions uh, as far as temperature go. Uh, Paducah sitting at 72, Bowling Green at 74, Louisville at 72, Frankfurt sitting at 76, Lexington sitting at 76, London at 74, Ashland at 77, and good old Moorhead sitting at 76 degrees. So really it's just a comfortable day across the state. Um, but as I said before, tonight we will be getting into some showers, uh, so you'll see a 100% chance of precipitation. So it, most likely is going to happen uh, with a low of 57 degrees tonight. So be aware of that. If you are going out, maybe grab a rain jacket or an umbrella and maybe just a light jacket just to keep you warm. Uh, sunset will be going down at 8.18 p.m. <clears throat> so that trend of rain will continue into tomorrow in the morning hours. Uh, there will be some showers to start off our day. Be aware of that as you go into the morning commute. A high of 63 degrees tomorrow, so it won't be as warm, warm as it has been. Uh, we'll just continue to fluctuate with those temperatures as we go throughout the the week next week, uh, sunrise at 6.43 a.m. So again, just be aware as your morning commute that there will be showers tomorrow, but those will taper off as we go into the evening hours. Uh, so it gets a little bit drier and a little bit better conditions out there. So as you saw today, uh, partly cloudy. Uh, those clouds are going to continue to increase as we get precipitation tonight. Showers in the morning tomorrow, high of 63, low of 42. Never like to see that, but those temperatures again are going to continue to fluctuate. 
Saturday, mostly cloudy, high of 68. Sunday, those clouds go away. A really nice day, 63 degrees. Uh, and then as we go into the rest of the week on Monday, 77 degrees. Tuesday, 81 degrees. And then Wednesday, we start to see those precipitation chances increase, but at least temperatures are staying pretty consistent throughout uh, the rest of next week. That's all I have for weather. I'm Isaac Kroom. Now on to Sports with Harvey. The baseball team played in a three-game series against Conference Pro Eastern Illinois. Thursday saw the two teams playing a doubleheader. Both, both games provided plenty of offense and provided to be a close matchup. In the first game, Moorhead saw strong performances from Connor Pauly and Trevor Snyder, both of whom drove in three RBIs each. This would propel the Eagles to an 11-8 win over Eastern Illinois. The next game would provide the same result as this time Jackie Heyman provided the Eagles with three RBIs and carried the team to a 10-8 victory. The last game of the series was played on Friday, but did not see as much of offense as the previous games. The Eagles were only able to, to produce two runs with Wood fall just short as they would lose 3-2. This brings the Eagles' record to 26-15 and 15 on the year. The Moorhead State Beach Volleyball team had a very successful homestand this past weekend against the University of Louisville. The two teams played twice on Saturday in what would be the last matchup of the season for the Eagles. The first match of the day was a clean sweep for the Moorhead, which they won 5-0. The next matchup was much closer, but would still hold the same result for Moorhead as they won by a score of 3-2. This brings the Eagles' record to 16-7 and on the year. The coaches believe this was a very successful season and a big step forward for the, for the program and team. The Moorhead State softball team was scheduled to play four games this past weekend in Tennessee and Missouri, but, but all of those games were postponed due to the weather. The team will bounce back tomorrow and play two games in Clarksville, Tennessee. The NBA playoffs continue to roll on as fans see the first round begin to wrap up. Two teams have punched their ticket to the next round so far as the Milwaukee Bucks defeated the Detroit Pistons in four straight games. The Bucks' next round opponent, the Boston Celtics, also swept their series against the Indiana Pacers. The Bucks and Celtics look to be an interesting second round matchup as those two teams played three games against each other in the regular season. The Celtics won the game while the Bucks won two, all of which had close scores. Be sure to tune in and check out all the playoff action. The Moorhead State men's basketball team is in the midst of, the, of their offseason. However, this graduate assistant season is always in full swing. Justin Chartrin has been a vital part of the operations for Moorhead State basketball during his time here. New Center sat down with him to learn more about his story. Yeah, I grew I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, growing up in Dayton, and the the pride that I think the city shares for for basketball is, is something that it's just it's in words can't describe um, the vibe, the the feeling, the emotion that runs through the city when it's basketball season is really special. And I, I fell in love with the game really uh, in high school. I went to the UK my freshman year. Um, I was at the University of Kentucky. Uh, for one year and I was trying to be a student manager um, for the UK men's basketball team um, however just things didn't work out um, and, and sometimes that's just the way the ball rolls luckily my sophomore year on um, that summer uh, I, I met up with a guy by the name of Preston Spradlin um, at Kentucky and it was announced that he was coming to Moorhead to be an assistant coach and I, I basically begged him for a job and said man like I'll, I'll do whatever it takes I, I, I just want I want to get back in the game and I don't know if that means I gotta leave I'll leave uh, ever since I stepped foot here, you know, I've just tried to make it sh make it known by how I work. You know, I, I want my my actions to do the talking. Um, you know, I'm trying to get my feet wet as an assistant coach. Everything is a step. You're not going to just get there overnight. Um, my plan uh, moving forward um, is to be a head coach. That's that's the dream. And many believe Justin will achieve that goal one day. For News Center, I'm Isaac Kroon. We'll be right back with more news after the break. Are you interested in pursuing a bachelor's degree in traditional music? Check out the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music located behind Pasquale's across from the Railway Museum. At the KCTM, you'll find friendly students and staff. 
The KCTM even offers international trips during the summer. If you're interested, call 606-783-9001. Want to lose weight but don't know where to start? The first step is simple, get active. Take a stroll from your dorm down to the Fuzzy Duck for about a one mile round trip. You can take it a step further and start cooking some healthy food, but walk to IGA instead of driving to Kroger. That's about a mile and a half. And when you want to reward yourself for making progress, a trip to the movies is a three mile round trip. Once walking gets too easy, you can always start jogging. Happy exercising. For all kinds of shenanigans and tips to make life on campus easier, watch Campus Clive on MSU TV. Hosted by Chaz Jenkins and Jordan Adams, Campus Clive aims to laugh your socks off with a hilarious twist on common campus issues, such as moving on campus. As you can see, it's, it's already taken its toll, but it'll be worth it in the end. I can't feel my hands. Or cooking on a budget. Two episodes of Campus Clive available on MSU TV channel 85 or on the web at msutv.net. An earthquake struck the Dyersburg, Tennessee area early Wednesday morning at 3.7 magnitude. Authorities say the earthquake reached roughly 10 miles underground and could be felt in parts of Kentucky. There are no reported damages at this point. The United States Geological Survey is continuing to determine how far the earthquake reached. The Campus Activities Board Campus Activities Board is winding down the semester with several events, starting with what they call Fishy Friends. Well, my name's Cameron Fodre. I'm the Educational Coordinator for the Campus Activities Board. So all year long, we've been planning free events on campus. We actually just rebranded from the Student Programming Board to the Campus Activities Board this year. Um, we're super excited for everything we're doing. This is actually our last week of events. It, um, all the events this week didn't even make it on our monthly calendar just because we've added so much for our last week of programming for the school year. Um, so you, Monday, we had a massage therapist come to campus just to give out free massages to students. Uh, they'll be back to campus on Thursday. Tuesday, which is today, we're doing Fishy Friends and we're giving out free goldfish um, to the first um, 30 students. We hope to do it again in the future. We bought enough supplies to do it again in the future. And the idea behind it was just something fun that students would want to come to, design their own fish tank. And really, um, it's been proven that Fish, watching fish reduces stress. So by watching your new pet go fish, um, it'll relieve some stress during this stressful time for college students. Wednesday, we have a comedian coming to campus. His name's Ronnie Jordan. Um, our people here at CAB actually booked him at our national conference a couple months ago. He's hilarious. We're giving out an Apple TV to attendees. We're raffling that off, Apple AirPods and other giveaways. So we really want a big crowd for that event on Wednesday night. A white supremacist was executed on Wednesday. John William King was put to death 20 years after killing James Byrd by dragging him behind a truck. King was one of three men convicted of the murder, as reported by ABC News. Byrd was a 49-year-old father of three before his murder. According to a report released by journey, attorney Jeff Anderson on Tuesday, more than 7,800 troop leaders and other adults involved in the Boy Scouts of America organization have been accused of abusing approximately 12,000 plus underage group members. These numbers were entered into court records during a January trial involving a sexual assault case at a children's theater in Minnesota. Professor of Psychiatry and Neurobehavioral Sciences Dr. Janet Warren testified that she is on private contract with the organization monitoring how the organization has handled its sexual assault cases. She and her team contributed to finding the perpetrators in possible sexual assault cases within the Boy Scouts. After the break, we'll be right back with more news. Come check out Moorhead State Public Radio, conveniently located in Breckenridge Hall. 
Here at MSPR, students can work in a real newsroom environment and learn real-world skills that will help them in the work world. Students at MSPR can gain actual on-air broadcast experience. Some students even have the opportunity to produce their own programs. MSPR also provides community programming providing local news, sports, weather, and current events. Check out MSPR, where opportunities soar. Are you interested in becoming a service dog sitter or handler? Four Paws for Ability at MSU allows members to get involved with the Service Dog Association. During your membership, you could help future service dogs get used to a public setting and get accustomed to staying on the clock in a home environment. For more information, follow MSU Four Paws or email msusda at outlook.com. weaknesses, any prior work experience? Uh, strengths, I'm really desperate and need this job. Uh, weaknesses, I don't really have any that I know, but I've been told I'm an excellent juggler. He should have gone to the suit bank. Career Services, now located on the ground floor of the library, has free professional attire available in the suit bank. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 till 4.30. Stop by and get the right attire to ace your next interview. Hope to see you soon. News Center caught up with two of Moorhead State's choirs for the last choir concert of the 2018-2019 season. Stop and let me tell you about the chapter one. Chapter one, God's work was just begun. Stop and let me tell you about the chapter two. When the Lord God written his Bible through. Stop and let me tell you about the chapter three. When the Lord God died on State Concert Choir and Chamber Singers performed in their final home concert of the year this past Tuesday at the First Baptist Church on Main Street. News Center talked with Jasmine Wheeler, the choir's treasurer, about why the concert was being held and how exactly it went. Um, this is our home concert we do at the end of the year just to give somebody a show to enjoy for the end of the semester and um, also to recruit. If you're interested in choir, you should audition in August. Um, but just to let people enjoy music. I thought it went well, and we got to have some lucky guest artists, um, Eric, Dr. Eric Brown and um, William Murphy, who played the organ. It was great. The concert held a wide array of works, including a Cuban cha-cha-cha, works by the famous Morton Lauridson, and a song by Billy Joel. <laughs> At the end of the concert, attendees retired to the church's basement for some sweet refreshments. After recusing himself from the special counsel investigation and being fired by the president, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions told a crowd of college students that it's time to accept the results when speaking about the Mueller report. The event in Massachusetts, which happened Wednesday, continued with Sessions addressing the president and the Mueller report. Sessions said, it's time to get on with the business of America. Earlier in April, Senator Ben Albritton and Representative Terry Collins of Alabama proposed matching bills to the state legislature that would ban abortion classifying it as a felony and giving the act a minimal prison sentence of 10 years. Within the bill, abortion is compared to the Holocaust and other various acts of genocide, causing widespread opposition. Anti-Defamation League spokesperson Jake Hyman said involving the Holocaust to advance any policy position is totally out of bounds. The League has sent a letter to the state legislature asking them to oppose the bill, but has not received any response. Neither Al Britton nor Collins have offered any comment to the public. 
Moorhead State Police Department has welcomed Officer Mark Klein, who was sworn in on April 17th. Klein was previously part of the Rowan County Law Enforcement for roughly 30 years. During this time, he briefly worked for the MSUPD in the 80s, serving as a parking and building security specialist. Klein has come out of retirement to be a part of the Sheriff's Department and now the MSUPD. That's all the news we have for you this week. Tune in next week for your weekly news update. <laughs>